Yeah, one of my another favorite of mine is the car that they used to take to Daytona to run the modified race with Darrell Watchett was old Camaro. Yep. And the fin, front fin, that, uh, Robert, I say that Robert G was uh, regarded as one of the best fabricators and body men in the business, and uh, <clears throat> worked on a number of different cars, uh, recognizable race cars over the years, the '71 K and K Dodge and so forth. Worked for Rick Hendrick for forever uh, in their body shop. But one of the things they did with that modified on the front fenders, they uh, they're big old humps, oh, and yeah. they took a fender off Volkswagen and fabricated that into the body of that Camaro, and yep. would. How would you, I mean, the, th- the, the the fact that he could think, this is what I need, where am I going to get it? I'm going to get it from this place, this car that doesn't even have no connection yep. to a muscle car like a Camaro and merge it into that body and make it work. Just incredible. Um, so you spent a lot of time with Robert G. That's the, uh, that's our grandfather. Um, and it, But how did you get connected back to your dad? How did you and your dad start to interact and eventually you guys moved in together. You lived with him for a while. Yep. How did that all happen? Well, the first, I guess, interaction was like I'd get to see him at the racetrack. Like, that was probably the first incident. Like, I went to Darlington with Granddaddy for the first time. That was probably one of my first races because it was close. I think I went to Daytona in 88 for the July race, but I never got to see the racetrack. And then uh, in 80, I guess it would be, what, 80? It had to be 80, 80 87. 87, I think I went to the track in Darlington. And it was kind of funny because, like, all these guys are over there. You went with a box truck with an open trailer, you know, so that's how you went. So we're going down there. I'm over there waxing on the car, and I can remember Daddy, I'd look over there, and he'd be over there right beside him. But that time, like, there was a feud between Bodine and Earnhardt. Yes. So I'm sitting over here with all this Levi Garrett stuff on. My <laughs> granddaddy <laughs> pops it over here with all the good rich stuff. <laughs> and I'm over there polishing, waxing the car. It was the old Nova that's down there at Hendricks now, was, and uh, I'm polishing it. And they're like, what are you doing over there, boy? I said, I'm over here polishing this bumper because this is all y'all going to see this week. <laughs> <laughs> so I started talking smack right then, you know. That's well, awesome. we ended up, we won the race. Bodine won oh, the race. Wow. So I, granddaddy gave me every hat, every trophy we had. I cut. I'm like, I ain't four foot ten, but I got this armload of stuff, and I've walked a long way around Darlington just so I could walk by their truck. Yeah. <laughs> I said, is this what you boys are looking for? And they're like, you keep on, and you're going to get it. You yeah. know? And I was like laughing, and granddaddy's like, y'all leave my boy alone. Well, just so happened the next week was like, or next couple weeks was like Darl- or Bristol. So I go into Bristol. Never been to Bristol. You have to unload everything, take it down in there. So I'm down in there. Well, I started talking my smack again. Well, Rick Boss, he comes over there. Come here, boy. He grabs me, takes me over, rips my shirt off, cuts my shirt off of me. I got my Levi Garrett shirt. He cuts it off of me, no. takes my Levi Garrett hat, pours kerosene on They light it on fire in the middle God, of Bristol. God, God dang. Oh, yeah. Seems I'm standing, aggressive. I'm sitting there with a pair of jeans. You know, they all gone to tech. So I'm standing over by the truck by myself, and I'm standing there with no shirt on, nothing but a pair of jeans. And they're like, I'm like, that was something. That's all the clothes I got. So they're like, well, here. And they get this good red shirt, and they throw it on me. And they're like, all right, now you look like something. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So granddaddy comes back, and they're like, we fixed your boy up. We got his head right now. <laughs> so that was kind of like the, he's like, y'all need to leave my boy alone. I'll be having to hear about that shirt all the way home. <laughs> you know, but that was kind of like our first interaction to be able to see each other at the racetrack and was just racing. And then, uh. At that particular time, you know, I'm 16, 17, same deal. Like, you, you're chasing uptown, cruising. You're trying to, be a, trying to be a teenager. But at the same time, I'm driving to Hendrix every day after school, trying to do whatever, learn whatever you can just to be around race cars. And then uh, we were building a house. Mom and my stepdad were building a house in Mount Pleasant. So it, I was driving from Mount Pleasant to Kannapolis to go finish school because I didn't want to change schools. Because everybody I'd went to school with my whole life, I didn't want to, like I had two more, I had basically a year and a half left. So I'd drive from Mount Pleasant there every day. And then uh, then it was like I was living in the travel trailer. Like we only had a, we bought five acres where it had a trailer, and then you had a travel trailer. Well, I was living in the travel trailer, and mom and stepdad and the two brothers, they were living in the trailer. So basically, we got into it because, like, one's working first shift, the other one's working third shift, and they wanted me to babysit as soon as I got home. Well, I'm 18 years old. I'm wanting to go 
yeah. hang out with my friends. Instead, I got to babysit two brothers <laughs> from like three to seven, and then you know I, you're not doing anything. So we kind of got had a falling out, and then uh, so Mama called pops and told him, said, you need to come get him. He's gone crazy. Like, you need to come get him. So he comes down there and he sees he's, he's like, he says, you just need to get in the car. So I get in the car and uh, we basically, from that point on, I live with pops. And it's like, we've been like, uh, I guess we'd say we've been more best friends than we have anything, like no two doubt. roommates. Yeah. I mean, we love each other, but it's like, we've, uh, we, we're 24-7 together. Yeah. Like, we were two roommates, best friends, get up. You know, I stayed at home there for a little bit, and he's like, all right, get up off that couch. Your ass is going to work. And he goes, you ain't sitting here burning my electricity up. <laughs> yeah. you know, so I go to work. and um, You went to work at Dad's. Yep, so I went up there and just helping. It wasn't nobody but him and Rick. About what year is this? This is probably 90. Okay. This is probably 1990. Okay. Um, so I still had a year of school, so. We, when I first got there, that's where we were building that car that's in the showroom over at DEI. It was that first uh, Daytona car. Mm. And they had a big rule change and a bunch of stuff went on, so that's when we got the first Hopkins chassis. But I was, like, I could polish a crust panel better than anybody you ever seen. Like So that's like, I went up there, like, that's all I did. Yeah. I polished crush panels, chrome them up, because I'm sitting down at Granddad's, everything that was aluminum, you polished. Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't go on the racetrack unless mm -hmm. it was polished or chrome. Yep. So they were laughing at me like, your granddad done ruined you. Like, <laughs> and I polished this up. and uh, But we built that car, and I polished everything in it, crushed panels, and Richard Childress was like, man, this is a beautiful car. <laughs> well, we won the next five goodies 300s with it. Like, that car would haul butt. So, But that's basically how it got started. But your dad, he was like, hey, I'll pay you $5 an hour to work here. And I was like, all right, that sounds cool. I mean, I ain't, ain't making nothing. Yeah. So... I'm making five dollars an hour. First week, I go in there, and he's like, "All right, come in here. How many hours you worked?" I said, "96." <laughs> he goes, "What?" I said, "96." He goes, "Ain't no way." I said, "I worked 96 hours." So he's, "Yuri, get in here." So he goes in there, and he tells pops, "Like this boy says he works 96 hours this week." And he goes, "Well, if that's what it is, he's wrote them down every day on that refrigerator." Said, "That's what it is." He goes. Well, do you realize, he says that right there, he says, he going to make more money than you got. <laughs> Pop says, well, that ought to tell you something right there. <laughs> it goes back so, to the negotiation of your salary yeah. years, years ago. So, yeah. It was like nine, 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 I don't know what it was. It was like right at a grand or something. I was all, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting ready to get paid. <laughs> yeah. you know? My man throws $400 across the table. He goes, this is all you're getting. And he goes, and by the way, you're going on salary next week for two yeah. two hundred dollars a week. And I looked at him. I said, I don't think that was in my favor. <laughs> you know, so I worked probably two years at two hundred dollars a week because I mean, it didn't matter to me about the money. It was being around race cars, being around dad. You know, it's like it was a whole new life for me, basically. Just to, and we had a good time. I mean, you, when you first start out in this business, it's like you're on the road and you're you're having a good time. Like you're going from city to city and you're just racing, you yeah. know, and me and your dad, we've, we've picked at each other on the road. Like I've, I've had a blast with that. And uh, you know, it's memories you'll never give up, you know? Yeah.